Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM. And the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. There is something special happening in the state of Maine. Of all the places we've been, this state seems to bend over backwards to help small businesses thrive. And we think we found one of the reasons for it, a television show. On the air since 1987, Maine Public Broadcasting produces a television show called Made in Maine. And today, we want to explore what happens when everybody in a state studies and celebrates the role of business in their community. Maine Public Broadcasting is to be congratulated. Most of the companies profiled on Made in Maine are small businesses. In one of the geographically largest states, we found that people truly believe small is beautiful. Everybody in Maine watches Made in Maine. Dana Connors is president of the Maine State Chamber of Commerce. When you can take the entrepreneurial spirit that's alive and well in the state of Maine, and when you can week after week provide for the viewing public the wealth of resources that we have in the state, when you can provide for them a showcase to take the individual or the three or four person company and to put in front of our public the type of show that Made in Maine has, the results it brings to the individual, the entrepreneur, but also to the people throughout our state that has a chance to not just see but to believe, to not just recognize what this state has to offer, but to appreciate the vast resources, entrepreneurial spirit, and the success that comes from that. How could you not love that show? Well, uh, you can definitely tell the people who are going to enjoy their stay here rather than the people who aren't. When you see someone walk off the boat with high heels on, you know that they're probably not going to come back. We're charming. That's, what, that's our thing. If you want convenience, go to a Holiday Inn. We're here to uh, capture the charm of the island. The people, well, what do you do out there? And I said, well, you come out to explore, um, you know, relax it on the front porch, do some hiking. Don't worry about the telephone, don't worry about anything, just relax. Made in Maine is one of our signature programs. Here at Maine Public Broadcasting, we have a very strong commitment to local production. And Made in Maine is part of our locally produced lineup of programs that reflects back to the viewers the activities and the values and the culture of the state of Maine. Mary Ann Alhadoff is the CEO of Maine Public Broadcasting. There are many entrepreneurs in the state of Maine and folks who are considering developing their own businesses. So Made in Maine features economic success stories and also introduces viewers to some very entertaining business owners. You know, Guilford of Maine boasts that 45% of their workforce has been there for more than 10 years, and it's all made in Maine. This is Lou McNally. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again next time, won't you, for another edition of Made in Maine. Since the beginning, Lou McNally has been the host of Made in Maine. 
but it wasn't but three weeks into the season, the first season, that the requests started piling up left and right. And to this day, I mean, we, we could shoot this as, as a daily show, four hours a day, and not run out of ideas. Hi, this is Chris Sweet from Maine PBS in the uh, television program Made in Maine. Is Don available? I wanted to know if uh, July 29th would be a good time to come up there. He said the, the week of the 8th of July was bad. If you wouldn't mind uh, asking him if the 29th would be good. All right, thanks, Tripp. Okay. We were doing auction, as many stations do, and some of the material that was coming in, uh, crafted by small main businesses and craftspeople, really began as an awakening moment for us. We began to really become uh, aware that there were a lot of things being made, a lot of things going on that we had no idea about. So that, that sort of prompted us to begin to look around at various businesses down the block, down the road, down the r other part of the state, and we began to get excited about this is a great idea for the series. Bernie Rossetti is the director of programming at Maine Public Broadcasting. That over the years, uh, Made in Maine is our most popular program with our viewers. It's a success story as a television program about success stories about business. So you were discussing. You were Chris works about, closely uh, with Steve Dunn, the editor the of the series. Super for the 15th season. Yeah, we'll have you know. Uh, 15 years kind of in the lower left hand corner just to celebrate that it's our 15th season. And we're going to have a special uh, full screen too, Where Are They Now, for that segment that we're going to do this year. Introduce that. Yeah, uh, taking a look back at the, the different seasons of Made in Maine and selecting one business and do a three to five minute segment. If you do that by email, Kathy Leonard's company, sure Auburn Manufacturing, was on, featured on the program. Yeah, exactly. It was it was a wonderful experience for us. It was a wonderful experience for my company. I mean, I don't think, I, I don't consider myself having been the star of that show. It was our company um, and it was our people. In fact, I think there were more of our employees on camera than me during that segment, which was wonderful. The people on camera, especially people working for companies, can tell the story in their own words. Um, it's not scripted, um, they're more animated and uh, I think we all respond to that better as an audience. Recognizing that Governor John Baldacci grew up in a family business. We've got a lot of good talented people here, a lot of good Yankee ingenuity, and, and I know firsthand a lot of independence too in our state, and I think that's great, and I think Maine has a lot to offer. This is Joe Wisherath. I currently run Maine & Company. Maine & Company is a private nonprofit that was founded in 1995 for the purpose of bringing new businesses into the state of Maine. How do you recruit companies to come here? There's a tremendous work ethic. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that stands out versus other states. When we talk to most companies in the state of Maine, they'll tell you that their people in the state of Maine outperform their employees in other states. Henry Bourgeois is the CEO of the Maine Development Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit organization very committed to economic growth in the state. Our mission is to drive and promote economic growth. And we do that through policy development work, a lot of leadership development work, and community development work. Why do you think small is beautiful? Well, we're deeply committed in this state, in Maine, to uh, an independent and, and entrepreneurial spirit. And for us, that translates into small communities, small farms, uh, small um, uh, businesses around the state. Uh, we believe at the Maine Development Foundation, and most research in the country supports this, that innovation happens best in small businesses, in small enterprises. The small enterprise could be part of a larger one, but small business is where it's at. In fact, in Maine, the driver of economic growth in Maine is small business. Uh, we made a decision to devote a complete facility to development work. Then we decided since we're going to devote a complete facility to development work, why not do a really good job of it? Small business is the driver of economic growth and vitality, and that's particularly true in the state of Maine. Ed Dynan is the chairman of Maine and Company. Right, I think there's three hooks in the state of Maine. The first hook is the telecommunications network. I think this network means that they can operate out of here. We just brought in another company in the last couple of weeks. We brought in a major company three or four weeks ago. And one of the things that they're finding is that they can do business here just like anywhere else. And one of the things that's really interesting is when they get here, they get, they get a couple of other benefits. They get the quality of life. It's a beautiful place to work and live. 
and they also get a workforce that's second to none. Small businesses in the state of Maine get connections to the world that are as good as anywhere else, anywhere in the, in, in the United States, but not just in the United States and the world. One of the interesting things up here, we have long distances between cities and some of our workers. We're doing telecommuting. It's not different than California, but we don't have, it's not because of urban sprawl, it's not because of traffic, it's because of distance. And what we've done is we put a network in place that allows businesses to work in large areas seamlessly. Bob Ludwig, founder of Gateway Studios, is a great example of a business owner who had achieved success, then moved his company to Maine for the lifestyle. Very often, because of the reputation uh, I have, people will just send me tapes from around the world. In fact, moving to Portland, one of the reasons we did that was that we figured that a lot of people w would just simply send me tapes by federal mail, you know, and stuff like that. And, but it turns out that we've had more artists and producers come up here than we even had in New York. Surprise. So there must be something about here that they really like. <laughs> Maine and company works hard to recruit this type of business, but the state is also committed to helping anyone start a business. This is Valerie Lamont. I am the director of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Small Business at the University of Maine, located in the School of Business. Uh, the center is the first center for entrepreneurship and small business in the entire University of Maine system and in fact in the entire state of Maine. It's education, technical assistance, access to capital, access to markets. I mean that's really what right. what the the process is for developing small business. And if they Jim Wilfong, an entrepreneur in residence for the Kaufman Foundation, then, uh, it, works it, closely uh, with Valerie as her business center right offers the Kaufman's 11-week fast-track program to train up-and-coming entrepreneurs. Uh -huh. Well, Maine actually has a very good infrastructure for helping small business to succeed. If we look at it uh, uh, in a logical way, education is always at the very foundation of what we do. There is also uh, a lot of money uh, available for small business if they have an organized plan. And having an organized plan is really the key. John Massawa is the state director for the Small Business Development Center program. The future has always been bright for Maine and it's always been great for small businesses. So John, what does it take for a small business owner to succeed? Um, first of all, they have to have uh, a willingness to work hard. Uh, nobody that uh, is, it's just not rolling out of bed and starting a business, you have to work hard at it. Um, you have to have some knowledge about it. I mean, often uh, folks will come to us and say they want to start a restaurant business, and we ask them, well, what do you know about the restaurant business? And they say, well, we like to eat, and I cook well at home, and the relatives love it. It's, that's not knowing the restaurant business. So uh, really, a little bit of experience might be appropriate, um, that they uh, are willing to ask questions, and willing to get help uh, is, is uh, 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 significant factors in, in their succeeding and having a little bit of their own money to get started. You can't get a smile from me. I'm a banker. I'm a banker. Susan Snowden is a vice president for Key Bank, one of the small business friendly banks in Maine. It's not a transactional relationship in Maine. In Maine, people want good advice. They want relationships. They want their banker to come in and add value to help their business grow. And so that's a critical piece. We are an important part of the team that advises a small business. This is Charlie Spees. Well, I'm the CEO at the Finance Authority of Maine, or FAME is our acronym, which is a great name because people can remember it. What, what we do is provide uh, financial assistance for businesses in the state of Maine, businesses of all sizes, but most of our work is with small businesses. We're designed to um, come in and fill a gap where the private sector doesn't necessarily or can't uh, work. We're not designed to compete with banks, but we're designed to make capital available where it might otherwise not be available. A person comes into a bank, the, the lender has three choices. He can say this is a great idea or it just doesn't fit our profile or we'd like to help you but there's a little bit too much risk. That's where fame can come in with debt enhancement. We can guarantee or insure a loan so that if the bank makes the loan but they don't get paid back, we will pay the bank back up to 90 percent or 90 cents on the dollar. So the bank can go ahead and work with a company where they otherwise wouldn't. We're not competing with the bank but we're making capital available. So what you're saying is if I've got a good idea you can find the money. Come on up to Maine. We can, uh, we've got a great place to live, a great lifestyle, and we have capital available for good business ideas. 
If you already own a business or if you want to start one, Maine is a friendly place. There's a banker who actually smiles at you. The biggest reason you will succeed in Maine is you are not looked down upon if you only have two or three or four employees. People are proud of your success if you're doing good work. You're given respect. They don't seem to be hung up on your sales revenues as much as on what you are actually doing for your customers. The fact that Maine Public Television has been producing a television series since 1987 that takes viewers inside of some of the state's smallest companies, and big ones too, is proof that there is enormous respect and fascination with what small businesses are able to produce and create. We wish that every PBS station would find a way to shine the spotlight on the great small companies in their viewership area because we know they'll also find that small is beautiful. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. To learn more about this episode, choose the overview. You can read every word you're hearing today when you choose the transcript and go deeper with the case study. There's streaming video and access to interactive study guides throughout the site. And here we are aboard the uh, Christian Elf with uh, Roger Burley. Roger, how are you? Great, Lou. Good Roger, to meet you. Roger, you're the owner of uh, Finest Kind Builders and Bakers EPD. Inc. Inc. Uh, oh, much. Inc. Okay. Well, what's well, well, I think we've always had a, a small business culture here in the state of Maine, uh, little cottage industries. Jeff Butlin is the New England Regional Director of the Small Business Administration. And, you know, the legislature and, and past governors and Governor King, have they've all worked very, very hard to make sure that these small businesses are capable of competing on a, a national or an international scale. But I think it goes back to the down east Mainers who are independent, who want to work for themselves, who want to work at home, who want to work out in the, you know, the garage in the backyard. And, and that that culture has, uh, you know, always existed here in the state of Maine. We probably had last year about 10,000 uh, people avail themselves of, of our services. We, we need to be more relevant so that people know that when they uh, do have an idea, when they do want to start their business, that they can find real help at the SBA. I'm the Commissioner of the Department of Economic and Community Development. This is Jack Cashman. Well, that's the agency that sets the policy, the state policy for economic development and uh, the direction that the state's going to take and provides all the assistance to entrepreneurs and, and small businesses. But I, I think we've done a very good job of setting up a, a working relationship with Maine small businesses. We provide incubator spaces and technology grants and financial assistance. We participate in a number of trade shows to promote Maine products. Uh, and uh, we maintain a website to promote main products. Uh, for the future, I would like to see us uh, concentrate more on the industries and the development of the industries that will lead us into the economy of the 21st century, mm -hmm. higher technology, biomed, aquaculture. Many manufacturers in Maine join together. Eric Howard is the director of the Maine Wood Products Association, and Lisa Martin is the executive director of the Maine Metal Products Association. Wood has been an important part of the Maine economy since the British first came here. Uh, the British came here because they needed tall trees for their masts, for their boats. They needed wood to build the boats. Um, and so that is sort of the basis for our wood industry. The association got started about 10 years ago when a group of small businesses got together and said, we should work together to market Maine. They realized that although they were very good at making their products, as small businesses, they weren't always the best at marketing what they made or running their businesses. And so they w got together to say, how can we learn from each other and work together to better our image and better our products? The best way that we work with our members is to try to help them help them help each other. And we have about 200 members right now, and they make a wide variety of products in their different sizes. About a third of our members are family, small businesses, one or two people, working in their house, working in their garage, in their basement. My name is Lisa Martin. I'm the executive director of the Maine Metal Products Association. 
We're a statewide association uh, that represents the uh, metal manufacturing and precision manufacturing industry in the state of Maine. We have about 202 members statewide. We have a lot of those small, what we call garage operations, uh, small family, one or two people shops, person shops, is that they like their life in Maine. After we finish the design work and the printing, it comes out to the shop where it's assembled and, and the fabrication begins. Made in Maine has, has not only allowed many of our companies to feature their, their products, to show some of the beautiful things that we make here, but it also has educated my, me, my family, and other folks that watch it on the incredible things that are made uh, by small companies here in the state of Maine. Well, the great thing about Made in Maine is it showcases some of our best citizens. This is the true bread and butter of Maine. These are plain vanilla people that care very much about making things work, strengthening their business, growing their business, and taking care of their employees and their communities. Whether it's a commercial boat or a pleasure boat, the first and foremost, it must be a, a seaworthy, safe boat. These people are gonna go out to sea, whether they're gonna go out to make a living, or whether they're going out for a pleasurable weekend. My father in Raymond Bunker taught me to build boats. I did not learn that at school. I wanted to hand that down to the next generation of boat builders, the same as they did to me. At a very early age, I saw the pride of workmanship that Dad and Raymond put into these boats. And it's carried over. Uh, when I see a boat leave, Sometimes there's a lot of sadness that we hate to see a boat go that we've worked on so much. But that's almost always offset with the joy that the owner has. It's almost like the kids running for the Christmas tree on Christmas morning. These people, when they come to pick up their boats, you can tell that they're just grinning from ear to ear. Rolling home. And those are the people that I know I want my children seeing on TV. Those are the people that we want other businesses and, and kids in high school to emulate and live in Maine and grow their own companies. I think Made in Maine is important for the state overall because it lends to that aura and again back to the cachet of Maine made products and um, people I know are, are tickled by the idea of living, vacationing and buying in Maine um, and so it all adds to the credibility of that branding. We have people coming into the state because they want to work here, they love the quality of life, and they have the opportunity to deal with London, Tokyo, um, Hong Kong, and have a life where they enjoy it, but also communicate across the world. People are just, you know, sort of hardworking, honest, straightforward, shoot from the hip. The show promotes main products. Right. And you can be producing the best product in the world, but if nobody knows it's there, you're not going to sell it. We don't have all the uh, rich resources maybe in other states, but what we do have is that value of hard work and industry and ingenuity, and it's trying to match things up to get by, trying to make sure that we can make ends meet. And in Mainers, you can't say no to them. Uh, if you say no to Mainers, they'll figure out a way to do it, you know, just to prove you wrong. And that's why I think our state leads in so many different areas. Well, Made in Maine, to me, serves as sort of an object lesson, serves as sort of an encouragement for people everywhere. Outside of Maine, it doesn't matter whether you're in Maine or not, but it serves as a way for people to start that idea they've always wanted to start. And they're hesitant about it. They say, oh, there are probably too many problems, too many uh, things that could go against me. But seeing that success story of someone in Maine might be the difference that gets them started on their own dream. People want to be their own boss. You know, they've worked for other people, they've seen the pitfalls, they've seen the ups and downs, but they want to be their own boss. Mm -hmm. And getting into business on their own, you know, working long hours, working weekends, getting the family involved, because it's their enterprise, it's their foundation, it gives them their future. And I think that's what Maine people want to be. They want to be in charge of their own destiny. Maine takes great pride in considering itself the entrepreneurial state. It's really why I'm in Maine. It's a part of who I am, what I've done, and, and I, I really do believe small is beautiful. Champion individual ownership, trying to provide them the type, type of incentive, encouragement. Maybe it's an incubator space. Maybe it's a government program. Maybe it's an incentive. But we recognize the key to our success is the individual. 
the individual's ability and creativity to take something from an idea and to build that into something that bears fruit. This state is very proud of that fact, and we try to do everything we can to nurture it, to preserve it, but most of all, to build upon it. Is everybody ready to move to Maine? The wonderful thing about one of the geographically largest states in the country is that people truly believe small is beautiful. I'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from IBM. We're not just for big business anymore. At our website, discover how technology can move your business forward. When it's your business, everything matters. IBM. And the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.